So, again, welcome, everybody, to the stream for today, where we're going to play some Astroneer. Hope you're ready for some space action. And by action, I mean dirt collecting, I suppose. Here we go. And we're going to start a new adventure game. And we open up. I've already customized my astronaut guy. So here he is. They give you different suit options. I've picked the flight suit. There's also more than just these four. But these are all, you can see, locked by different achievements. I haven't unlocked any of them, so I can't pick them. They also have some outfits and colors that you can purchase with real cash money, but I haven't done that either. And here they have different color palettes, so you can always change that too. I'm going with the Exo Teal. You can change your visor color. The only ones that I have available to me are gold and silver, and the gold matches better. Honestly, I kind of like how silver looks better. But the gold matches my outfit better, so we're going with gold. And thank you for following, Liz Moppet. Appreciate it. I don't think this game has any DLC. It has an in-game shop, so I don't know when the last time you played. But that's now a thing. Let me go back, just to show that. See, they have the Exo Outfitters now. And you can pop in there and look at that. You can purchase different outfit colors. Look at that cyber state. Wow, it's like you're all metallic fancy. And so they have the obits, and you pay real cash money to get that. Yep, so I don't know when they added that exactly. Might be a recent addition, which is why you're not aware of it, but there you go. Back over to this. Start adventure game. There we go. Haven't played in forever. Well, now you know. So, in addition to those normal unlockables, you can do that too. And I gotta say, though, the visor colors, they have this galaxy one, which looks very fancy. The other two here are just different colors still, but the galaxy one looks fancy. But I don't have that unlocked, so I can't use it. Don't have any hats. Don't have any masks. I've changed all of my emotes here to confused because clearly that's going to be my constant state. Only confusion. I feel nothing else. By the way, hello there, Kiwi Pazooka, and welcome to the stream. Last time I played was maybe the launch? Well, then it's been quite a while, huh? All right. But now, my space guy is all customized so we're gonna launch confirm these settings yes and off into space we go chat i hope you're buckled in because a very bad idea to not be buckled in just be free hanging out within the pod blast off and you're just getting thrown all around our little ship dangerous I think the last update was the automation one? Hmm. Well, seeing as the first time I played was a week or two ago, any sort of updates are essentially all just a single piece for me, so... This is a fun game. I've enjoyed what I've played of it so far, but... This is the beginning for the stream play. Oh, you forgot me? If you mean welcoming you to the stream, you are part of the general welcome when I start during the intro sections. That always is... Wait, unless you mean... I forgot you back on the spaceship! Oh, no! Sorry, Baldir. It looks like you're just gonna be stuck up there watching me secondhand. And by the way, Hashizaku, welcome to the stream. All right, so we start out with my little shelter. It pre-gives you that. And if we walk over to the launching pad, we're able to deploy a starting package. So here you can see I've got a medium printer, an oxygenator, and a platform. We're going to want to pull off the platform. 
and slap that down and plug it in so it can get some power can random people join your game no because i'm playing it offline and we also want to put the oxygenator into the ship open that up so that it can provide some oxygen and then we'll put the printer on the platform I placed, which I apparently didn't plug in, so let me just redo that. And since it takes up two spots, the printer, I have to put it in the middle. And there we go. Now, what we're going to need next are some tethers. You see how there's this blue uh, pipe, I guess you could describe it as, going from me to the either ship or that platform that provides oxygen so when i'm over here i'm just running off oxygen in my tank so we need some compound so i can build tethers which will link together the pipe to provide me with oxygen been hearing noises on the station there might be some hostile space critters uh-oh you might might want to call somebody. Uh oh. Okay, so first, when I was playing in my game by myself, I found some compound just below the Earth's surface. I'm gonna end up calling it Earth all over the place, but this isn't really technically Earth, it's a different planet. So, uh, upon this planet, and in my solo game, there was compound just below the surface. So I was just digging it out. And I knew that because the, you can see how there's a little icon there that has a little flower symbol that indicates what sort of... Oh, look, see, there's some compounds now. I'm gonna walk back over to the ship real quick so I can restore my oxygen levels. Since there can be some below the surface, if you hover around, you can see that indicator and be like, aha, if I dig down, I can get some compound that way. We're gonna wander over here. Ooh, there's a research sample. Research that so I can get some bites, so I can unlock more buildables later on. So now that I've collected that compound off the surface, we're going to want to dig down to collect more because there's a lot of crafting things that require compounds. And again, tethers in particular are going to be how we're able to travel far away from our main base area. It's a vacuum stream. <laughs> I'm just gonna vacuum up some dirt here, chat. Mm, something else, too, is that we can craft these little small canisters, which allow me to collect up the dirt and then place the dirt, which is nice to have, because then as I dig down, if I've accidentally dug in such a way and then slid down, being able to place dirt is useful because then you can kind of make a little ramp more easily however to do that we need some resin and i can see there's resin just out over there but that's just hang on there's actually resin a little bit closer out over here so let's just do a slight jog over mm, yes the plant here is made out of flint i am glad my, I don't know, my equipment is identifying that for me. I would never be able to tell otherwise. And you can see it even appearing on my backpack, the little groups that I'm getting. I also like that we've landed next to this crate that has a bunch of little toy robots. Can't do anything with them right now, though, because I don't have the equipment to do something. It also looks kind of goofy that I can't... Ah, wait. Hang on. I'm not 
not exactly sure how to use these. Oh. Packages up items for easier carrying and transport. I think you can use them maybe on some items. Like maybe if I slap it on to the robot. Oh. That is how you use it. Look, and then you can just move the robots right over to your base. You can start a nice little package group. Hang on. It also looks like a present. So this would have been a part... I think they did a Christmas update. Based upon how things were looking in different menu options. This one looks like a little gift box because Christmas. And I guess Santa was attempting to deliver presents around the world. And unfortunately he ran into some problems. So now there's just a bunch of these toy robots left around hanging out next to the crate. And hello there to you too, Ink Sands, and welcome to the stream. Go ahead and place this present over with the other one. Alright, and now that I've got a couple of resin spots, I'm going to print out one of those canisters. And I'm also going to ditch a bunch of these plants that I may, uh, collect in. I'll be able to craft... I look over at my printer. Hang on. Forget what it requires for the storage. Let me open up my book. Got small canisters. There's some boost mods. Or just various mods to improve my equipment. That's not what I'm looking for. I think it's in this media printer section. Aha! Here we go. See, medium storage. I have that unlocked. It has resin 2 required. And actually, that said it requires a small printer to function. So actually what I need to do is go over here and print out one of these and to do so I need one compound. So I'm going to have to go and continue to collect compounds. I have been watching for 30 minutes. Ah, so just now coming out to say hello in chat. Also, something that's rather convenient, too, when you have the small canisters, is that you then, since you're able to place blocks outwards, you can still collect the materials when you're adding, not just when you're digging in. But you can see that it still has that little compound symbol as I'm digging, so I know that there's more compound around. It's only when that symbol disappears I go, Oh, there's no more compound here. I can move on somewhere else. Alright, and since I have some compound spots, I can pull out the print. And we want, not the beacon, but tethers. See, and then I print and it uses up the compound. Uses up a little bit of power, and ta-da! I've got feathers. Yeah, it is kind of like sniffing it out, you know? Put out my little cursor. Oh, there's plants here. I smell some plants over in this direction. Some organics. Wait a second. This isn't space. This is planet. I feel betrayed. Oh, oh, but Venera... No, where exactly does a planet lie? Why, yes. It's correct. It lies out in space. Therefore, the still space stream, eh? It's kind of like semantics, but I'm correct, so take that. 
Also, you can just barely see it hanging out on my backpack here, up in the top left corner. Those are the number of tethers I have left, even. So as I place down one more, it's gone, and I have no more tethers to place. So now I need to go collect some more compounds. That way I can explore out further. And I want to take this research item back to my base so that when I build a research station, I can get some bites from it. So we are all astronauts. Take that, NASA. Hell yeah, because guess where Earth lies? In space. So when you go around exploring the planet of Earth, Chet, you're essentially a space explorer. Mm -hmm. Those NASA scientists trying to act all cool like they're researching space. Well, guess what, NASA? I am a space explorer, too. Now, we've got a lot of resin filling up my backpack here. I'm gonna put some of that down. Except, kind of messily this time, just slapping it right there next to my base. And I used the tethers and kind of built all around where I was digging for compounds. So that's a little bit inconvenient and goofy, but too late. I dig back down to find more compounds. I'm also trying to dig somewhat carefully so that it's easy to both go down further into the earth and the exit again, because if I just dig straight down and try and turn around and climb back out, it's not very easy. And hello there, Emilia, and welcome to the stream. That means all cowboys are space cowboys. Also accurate. That means if you've ever thought to yourself, I wish I could be a space cowboy, you can. You just have to be a normal cowboy and that will instantly qualify you as being a space cowboy. Aha. Uh -huh. And very low on oxygen, but I'm like right next to the tether. Fill up and continue. I'ma eat some space plants. What can go wrong? Kiwi says holding a kiwi in his hands, munching down on it. Technically, space plant, because we're out in space. That's a space kiwi, it'll kill you! No, 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 no. Space kiwis, totally good. Right? Right? I look over at Kiwi Bazooka who I think has already started eating the kiwi. That's what it looks like. He's munching on something. Space cannibalism? No, 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 no. Kiwi bazooka. You are a bazooka that shoots kiwis. So you have to eat kiwis in order to shoot them, right? So unless you're eating some kiwi bazookas, you know, some bazookas that shoot kiwis, Cannibalism, you're fine. All right, boom, got some extra tethers, and now it'll be easier to go down and collect some additional compound. Which again, we will want a lot of. So here we go down. Hang on, actually, before I start going down, I'm gonna try and make sort of a little walking path. Maybe not right here, because there's still compound. This side has some less compound. Maybe I'll dig down on this spot here. Carefully. Try and make it so it's not absolute hell to climb down and walk up. Which, uh, as Cheese commented, it is a little bit difficult, awkward, with the way the landscaping terraforming works. Let's see. I think there was more compound in this direction, so we'll dig over here. Actually, let me hop up a little bit so I can place down some tethers. I think that one's too far to con Wait, no, that one does connect. Well, it's just connecting through the earth. Through the dirt here. How convenient. we 
just dig? I'm gonna spook myself constantly, I feel like, as I descend and be like, I'm not gonna dig myself into a pit of which I trap myself, right? I'm not gonna doom myself to pit death? Essentially digging myself a grave down here. Hmm. However, I'm also not seeing... Wait, there's some compound over here. I'll dig up here. There's a whole lot of this weird blue material. I don't know what that is. Blue dirt? There could be different earth materials that you have to dig through that are slightly different. What would you say? Toughness? That can make it easier and harder to dig through. Ah, there it is. It's up a lot higher. But it seems like the blue is even to this orange and green dirt. Maybe just different biome type of thing, so they're different colors as a result. Oh, look! There's some purple! Oh, how pretty. Too bad, though. Whenever I place it, it's just a single tone. Sort of a beigey gray. Uh-oh. I'm digging up into the surface because I just knocked down a tree there. Uh-oh. Seems like there's some compound up there. Or it's just extremely close to the surface. Not a whole lot down here deeper. Let's dig out in this direction because it seems like there's more compound over here. Do a little, uh, bit of a bridge. There we go. Changing the camera angle helped me out there. <laughs> Humanity has only been here for five minutes and we're already destroying the environment. Well, we did land here on this planet to collect resources. So I think destroying the environment was kind of a given. Blurt looks more like Play-Doh. It is kind of Play-Doh-y, huh? Especially when you are looking at different colors like the blue over here. What if we're actually just on a Play-Doh planet? Everything is just made out of clay. That's why it's so easy to dig into. I say everything is just made out of clay. You know, where exactly does clay come from in the first place? The fucking ground? Hello, you're on normal, regular Earth, and you can get clay. Instead of dirt, you come across clay. That's a thing. So, specifically describing it as Play-Doh. It's very different than just slapping clay on that description. All right, a little bit more organic material since I'm up here at the top. I feel like destroyable environments really needs to be in more games. It's part of the reason I keep coming back to Seven Days to Die. It makes the world feel more interactable when you're able to do so, certainly down another pile of my organic and now we've got some compound here so I wanted to build that small printer so let's shuffle around here we go that's what I want and we will print that and thank you for following Sans appreciated and all of these sort of base furniture pieces all have to be placed down on platforms in order for them to work. So there's my small printer ready to function. I am going to build. I want storage. Medium storage requires two resin. Let me just, what I like is even if I don't have my backpack up like this, if I have it down here minimized on my back, I can still grab materials around and stick it in. So I like the fact you can interact 
with your equipment without necessarily having it pulled out. While I have to maximize it if I want to remove things, it's nice that I'm able to stick them in without having to pull it up. And hello there to you too, RRCPF, and welcome. There's something very satisfying about breaking things. Also true. It feels more interactive than if you were to just walk around and just pick things up off the ground all the time. Alright, there we go. Medium storage. Print. And while that's printing, I'm gonna go ahead and give my let's see, printables here a little peek. Small printer. What small generator? Because if I print that out, it makes this little device that makes my other powered objects work just a little bit faster. And it runs off of organic. However, I don't want to just slap that right on because then it instantly starts powering and using up the material. So I want to wait until I'm actually utilizing one of the printers again. So observe, as I drop down this medium storage, if I, whoops, if I were to make another store, or yes, another medium storage here, and I start printing it, you can see the speed currently, grab the material, stick it on, and it goes just a little bit faster. It's more apparent on some devices versus others, though. I also think it has more of an effect when you have four base items that are drawing power, too. All right. So let's place our storage over here. And I'll put away all my plants. Nice and organized. And I should probably pull, turn that generator off so I'm not using up my power there. Those organic things look a lot like cacti. You know, that's true. They do look kind of like cacti. I always viewed them as a stack of sort of flower leaves. But now I'm going to glance over at them and see them as more like succulents now. And thank you for the five bits, Ink Sands. Appreciate it. Now let's see. What? Let me pull out my backpack. Actually, let me pull out my... I don't recall what this device is called. Uh... My blueprint. <laughs> I can't think of a right word to describe it. Oh well. My blueprint log. I'm gonna peek around that to see what I want to make here. Now what I could do is make a large printer so I'm able to print out some of these larger items like the research chamber. That would be a good one to get. I also need some platforms to stick everything down onto. Oh, something else that I'll require also. Let's see. Is it in the medium printer or is it in the large one? I must say, remember seeing people playing this in like 2019? It looks much better now. I've had Astroneer on my wish list, I think, for approximately a year and haven't purchased it and started playing it until recently. So I don't know how it compares, but in its current state, I'd say it's not bad. A planner? Maybe like a blueprint planner. I almost feel like I could look at the controls and it would give me a better name. More proper name for this. Alright, platforms, storage. These are vehicle pieces. Okay, back over to the large printer. Oh, yes, this is what I want. I want the smelting furnace, because we're going to find some raw materials around, and we'll need to smelt them to refine them. 
Is it okay if I ask if I can join? I, you can ask, but I am currently playing offline, so you won't be able to join, no. Alright, so to make the smelting furnace, we'll need one compound, two resin. We'll also need 250 bytes so that I can unlock it. Here, you can see I currently have 70. And there were a couple of those plant pieces that I researched that were hanging around. That also contributes bytes. There's also that research lab I can build. Research chamber. And if I stick these huge items onto it, those will give me bites over time. So, the first thing I want to build is a research chamber. But in order to get the research chamber, we need a large printer. And we'll need three compounds for that. So what I need to do right now is get more compounds. A lot of items, like I said, require compound in order to craft them and i think i kind of exhausted the amount of compound that existed at this little spot here so we're going to have to explore a little bit further maybe in another direction actually there's a little bit more compound over here but we'll probably need to start exploring a little bit further perhaps To find another spot that has compound. Oop, I didn't mean to place you. You're taking bites of this stuff to research it? Well, yeah. It's like a baby. You know? Whenever you want to know more information about something, you stick it in your mouth. And you bite it. Perhaps eat it if the taste is too objectionable. It's just plant. Plant, plant, plant. Any more compound? Yeah. Ooh, there's also, there's also resin right next to it. So that should be obvious because I can visually see that. The compound, I can't. Actually, there isn't any compound. It's just resin. Which, I suppose I'll collect a little bit so I can get a stack of it. But what I want still is compound. And I want to be careful as I dig down over here. Because otherwise I'm going to just dig through like this and make a big hole I can fall into. Alright. We'll carefully maneuver around. What is that? Oh. Huh. Weird plant thing. Which I can research. So I guess I'll carry this over to my base. I can technically grab it and carry it on my player. But it, I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like when I'm sprinting without holding anything that I move a little bit faster. So it feels faster if I just throw it out in front of me, run, and then just kind of do that on loop. Put that down with the other. Whoop. It fell over. Whoops. Well. Let's go ahead. Top off on my oxygen. Actually, let me also put down... My remaining organics. One. And a two. And I've got a little stack of compound so I can restore my number of tethers. And then we'll start running away and see if I can find some more compound out here. Wait, right over there. You see that? Those weird bubbles? That's compound. That's what I want. That's what I need. And by the way, hello there, Finisar, and welcome to the stream. I ran out of tethers, so let's print some more. Just wait until she starts doing megabytes. Mm. Even more knowledge and information. So you go on to the megabytes, the gigabytes. The terabytes. And while there's more compound underneath right here, I'm going to take a, a little bit more of a step further away since, whoops, that one got placed too far away. Move that. Go and collect what's on the surface first. 
These look a heck of a lot like Lego flowers. Legos have those little singular pieces and they'll put them on other little singular pieces. And then they get little Lego flowers. That's pretty much what those plants look like. Excuse me, am I really not close enough to grab those? I also need more tethers. Let's print that. They look nearly identical. Yeah. With some of the geometric shaping of the environments here, it does give a lot of things a sort of Lego-y look. It's just those plants in particular looked very Lego-y. Just collect away at the compound. All right, now that I've pretty much collected everything off the surface here, now we'll start digging down to collect more. But I think I'm going to go over to this first location of compound to dig down to. Since it then places it a little bit closer to the base. Yeah. You usually avoid vacuuming Legos, though. Yeah, because if you vacuum up your Legos, you can't come back and play with them later. Imagine, oh my god, imagine in order to clean up Legos after you've made a huge Lego mess from playing with them, you just vacuum them up. Here you go, you've made yourself a little Lego figure. You take it all apart, you grab your Lego vacuum and it all gets vacuumed up and taken away. And it looks like we're also finding a different sort of resource because you can see that little icon. Oh, it's quartz. I haven't actually gotten to build anything with quartz yet, but it does refine into glass. So anything that requires glass to build We'll need some quartz. I feel like maybe the compound's up a little bit higher. That's why I'm not finding any. There we go. You get to different depths and it functions like, say, Minecraft, I guess is an example. And the types of minerals, resources, you're able to collect changes. So if you get too far down, you stop finding compounds and you find things like this quartz instead. It also becomes very slide-like. If you make things too steep, your character just sort of whoosh right down. Nice little fun slides. Look up. From here, if you mean for the compound. Or are you trying to say there's something else that's lurking above me? Uh, I do see that little tiny speck right there that also appears to be compound. Or if you're just saying, look up as the space is above you. Oh my god. Chat, did you know if you go outside and you look up and you see all that sky? You know what the sky also kind of equates to? Space. You know Chicken Little? And when he starts telling everybody about the sky falling? Isn't that kind of like space falling too? So here Chicken Little is out running around going, The sky is falling! The sky is falling! He could have been out running around yelling, The space is falling! Just imagine all of space coming down, descending upon you. Then it feels a whole lot bigger. No! My spaceophobia! Space looks over at Grey, smirking. Oh my god. Alright. Now, 
you might gaze upon all of these compound spots and go, wow, she's got a lot of compounds now. You'd be wrong, because we're going to use up so much of it so fast. Let's see. The first thing we wanted to build was a research chamber requiring one resin and two compounds. Print that. Now observe it getting printed. And then if I turn on my small generator, boom, faster. I'm not totally sure if I just could stack a million, like make an entire platform just covered in small generators and have it go super fast. I would assume so since they generate power. But having a generator that doesn't run off organics would be convenient because then I don't have to use up all of my organic or go out and collect more organic to use, you know. Space doesn't exist, obviously. I place my hand on Krat's shoulder. I point up. Above. Do you see that? Do you perceive it? I look him in the eyes. That's space. But hello. And welcome. To the stream. That's right, production, boom. We've got a research chamber. However, we can't just open this up and slap it down. We need a platform to place it on. So we're going to want to come back over to my printer here. And we're going to want to print out this large platform. A. However, it takes two resin. And guess what I do not have? Resin. So we're going to have to take a short little walk out along here so we can get some more and I see they're just straight up hanging on the ground some resin and what the fuck do you see that over there chat just off in the distance what the fuck is that gonna have to remember that that's there so we can go Take a little exploration walk to figure out what that is. We want to make sure we've got a good supply of compound on us. That way we are able to make tethers as we run out so we don't run out. Space ghosts? I didn't know there were space ghosts. Oh my god. Looks important? I would imagine so. It's sort of like some significant beacon indicator. So... Usually, something that generates large beams of light. Probably something you want to go check out, explore, something significant. Imagine if we did, and we go over there, and it's just, I don't know, a fancy little item that's like, Hey, you can research this! 25 bytes! And then that's all it is. And I'll look at it and be like, wow, thank you. Definitely glad I took a trip out here. For 25 bytes. There's only room for one large bean here. Bean emote. Oh, wait. You said beam. Oh, oops. <laughs> then RRCPF has now accidentally unleashed the bean. And now it's free to wander on the planet. We wanted more resin, I think. Yes. I used up the two I had. I also see there's uh, another little spot of compound. So let's also collect that while I'm at it. I like that's all that was poking out from the ground here. For a second I saw this planet rising out from the horizon. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I realized it was just a planet. Oh, silly me. That's nothing. Ignore it. I walk off collect the rest. I should almost have some sort of indicator. We'll just dig down right here to make some significant visual difference so that I so it kind of gives me an indicator that something's there. Or a reminder. Either or. I guess though, making like a pillar like that works better. You know? Like Cheese's comment about making the cocks basically put big cocks in the earth that way I remember there's materials I can collect 
All right, we've got quite a bit of resin. It takes a lot less resin that you have to dig up versus compound in order to get a nice little stack. It is very hard to miss. Yeah. Yeah. All right, see, and look, my platform's all done being built. Put away my resource gun. And I'm going to put the research station over here. You can see there's only so many spots off of my shelter that have these cables. So I am imagine that I'll have to, later on, build a dedicated power machine or maybe some additional shelters. That way I'm able to have more devices running at a time. Though I can always, since you know I can pluck these off no problem, I can always just have a platform or two and just swap out what I'm using. There we go. Put the research chamber on it and then I can put one of these items in and we can start researching. I just have to click the button. Ta ding and it has a little timer right here in the top right corner saying that this is going to take 10 minutes to research. If I make sure that I have some of my other devices off, that makes it run a little bit faster. If I also take, say, this organic, stick it in. Oop. And stick it. There we go. Stick up. And stick the organic in. And then I come back over and look at the research chamber. You can see that now it says five minutes rather than ten. So having the little generator here powering also cuts the research time in half. That's right, cactus power. Space Play-Doh dong marker. The pioneers used to ride these babies for miles. Imagine if in the past as sort of landmarks they would just take some trees and kind of tip them over a little bit and make them look like tree cocks and be like there we go now we know we went past this area thanks to this tree dick beautiful is that just debris that's just debris all right i ran out of tethers i also note that i don't need to collect more resin quite yet, though I'm... Maybe want to put down another platform. I do... Oh, don't forget. Shift to sprint. Also want to make sure that I get that smelter furnace. But I need bites to research that. Yeah. Yeah. 250. Which this research item will get that for me. All right. I'm going to offload the resin here on the. I'll put it with the plants over here. I think it took resin to make the storage, so let me print out another storage piece because these ones are getting filled up pretty quick. So you are saying our. Scientists just need a bit of cactus juice to research faster. Sort of, if they're having a, pa a, a, a research problem because of power supply, then yes, all they would need is some cactus to be able to go faster. But if their problem is something else, like I don't know if they're stupid or something, that's a different issue that cacti probably won't help. All right, and there we go. Maybe don't put it right here, blocking that plug. We'll move it to right here. Also, you can note how I can pick up the platform and just move it around, no problem. I can also lock it in place so that I can't do that. Keeps you from accidentally misclicking and picking up your platforms. So if you've ever so meticulously placed it down and said, yes, this right here is the perfect location. 
You just slap down a lock and now you can't accidentally move around. Because truly, when you're trying to place things, put a nice layout for your base, and you accidentally ruin it, like picking up the wrong thing, you throw yourself into hell. If I removed everything, I want to pull off the quartz here too. I don't think I can... Oh, I can't pull it off my gun. Let's see, we got soil, compound. I don't think I care to walk around with that organic. How much time do I have left on my research? Just a minute. Wait, I think that just popped up to three minutes because I ran out of my organic material. Let's refuel that. And... I need to make tethers, but after I make these tethers, we'll go out and collect some more compound. I want lots of compound. And then after that, we can maybe take a little bit deeper and get more advanced materials to be able to print out some fancier build items. Awful windy looking. Hope none of your stuff can tip. I'd be most concerned about my storage tipping over. Seeing as those I was not able to lock down. And see, as I walk over here and I observe, oh look, it's a pit. I know this is where I was digging for my compound. Incoming transmission. Hi, Kaka. Just want to say everything is going great on the space station. Awfully lonely up here. But I hope you and chat are making a great new base down there. Well, it's slow progress at the moment, Baldir, but slowly we're building it up. We're collecting up some good resources and materials. So, progress, slow, but smooth, I think. And hello there, GB and Fitzlurk, and welcome. We spacing? Hell yeah, we're spacing. Um... Mostly digging out here in space rather than something like, I don't know, space jumps? Hanging out more in the atmosphere? We're staying down here on the surface and digging. No compound, no compound. Hmm. I might have collected all of the compound that's up here. So we're going to move to our second spot. We are making dongs. Oh yeah, we are doing that occasionally too. This spot that had compound, I want to remember it's here. So we just make our little terraformed dong sticking out. And then we can remember that there's compound. When do we unearth the Balrog? I don't know. It depends on how many Balrogs are hanging around and how many exist to unearth. Compound dong. No, that's just dirt dong. The compound is going on my backpack and I'm not using that to build with. Something I like too when you use the add rather than dig is it sometimes pulls out a lot more of the resource at a time than digging does you can see how digging i'm getting that tiny speck and there's even these two spots here if i add instead just boom pulls a whole lot at a time so it's like speed collection Oh, and hello there, Twitchy, and welcome to the stream. It's a little bit hard to tell. When I hover down here and it says there com there's compound, I'm not sure if that's actually saying it's up above. But here you can see I'm digging a little bit slower in this rock material. It also sounds different, too. So that's why there's the different material toughnesses. And I'm pretty sure there were a couple of drill mods that related to being able to dig harder materials. So I think even beyond this mountainous area,
area, there's probably going to be more. That's even harder to dig. And then by extension, I don't know if that means that we're going to end up finding some type of rock that my basic drill is not going to be able to dig through. And if I want to be able to, I'm going to have to upgrade? I don't know. We'll just have to see if we get to that point at all. Because for now, we're just getting more compound. And in fact, actually looking at my backpack, it is very full of compound. I would like to fill up what's on my tool currently, and then we'll return back to base. Oh, see, and there we go, full stack. So we will head back now. Oh, collecting some more of these Lego flowers first. That gave me a pretty good amount. 36 and 49, 49 particular. That's a pretty good amount. I was just coming to say hi. So hi, game looks cool. I'll have to watch the VOD later. That's at your discretion, whether you do or don't. But thanks for coming on by to say hello. I forget that sometimes. The fact that I can press shift to run. I need to make the goddamn car so I can just drive around instead, too. Then we could really get some fast traveling happening. See, now I can grab my other research item. Put that on there. We're going to want... There was one out over here, I think. We are going to want to have some more of those at the ready. So whenever I return, I can just swap out and co keep collecting those bites. I wish I could stay. It's okay. We're all busy sometimes. Okay. Let me pull out my book. We wanted smelting furnace, which I can unlock now, so we'll go ahead and do so. So we need one compound and two resin. We'll put away some compound I have. And then put out some... Wait, was that organic? I don't want to grab that organic. I wanted the resin. Resin. Eh. Resin. And... Compound. Well, that dropped on the ground. I don't actually have to directly put it in like that. Because when I walk over to print, it'll automatically load it in for me. I took two resin. What? I already had... Ugh. Here, I swapped out what we were planning to craft. I should say print. It's barely crafting. I'm just sort of slapping the material into my printer here. And then it's just printing it out for me. And when I have the printer and research station running at the same time, everything slows down quite a bit. And we're also going to need to build another platform and put that on. That way it can run at the same time. While that's going, let's go ahead and give a nice little browse of what I'm able to make. There's packager, printer. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, here's some power items. The small generator was that plant-powered one here. You can also have power cells, which is a consumable item that increases your power capacity. We've got a solar dish, but that requires copper, and I don't have any copper yet. Oh, the small wind turbine, however, requires glass. And I do get glass by refining this quartz. So if I make the smelting furnace, we can get some glass, and we'll be able to make some wind turbines. All we would need is to get a little bit more bites so that we're able to research and unlock that. Don't care about any mods at the moment. Man, I need to unlock the camera because then we could walk around and take pictures of things. But I need steel and it requires 2,500 bytes to unlock. Prints for making the cars. Hang on. Here we go. 
All right, so I can make something like a rover seat. And then we could build tractor piece. I need some materials so I can get some aluminum. Because then we could build these vehicles for journeying. All right, we've got that smelting furnace. That means then we want to start doing a platform. Here we go, large platform. That takes two resin and I only have one. So, we're gonna have to walk away again to get a little bit more resin. Oh my god, if we did get a camera, we could take pictures to send off to Baldir on the space station. Man, but it's too expensive right now, so we can't do that. Ugh, Baldir currently left pictureless. There's more resin around. Ah, directly underneath where I've got my tethers placed. Wonderful. And alone. Yeah, because you were the only chat member I managed to ditch up there, Baldir. Well, oh, I guess I did forget about the space rats. Have, how have the space rats been doing? Have you run into them at all? I've heard stories that the space rats can both be incredibly friendly and incredibly destructive, annoying. I don't know the type of space rats we've ended up with. You're gonna have to keep tabs on that. We do have rat traps on standby if you do need to use them, though. All right, while that is printing, let's get out this compound and we'll go run and collect some more resin. Making sure I empty out everything I have from my bag first. Except for this one spot of compound. That way I have it to be able to make more tethers. Don't go into the airlock at night. Uh, I don't know what that means. Wait, it's space, it's always night? Or is it always day in space? What? What even qualifies as day and night when you're in space? It feels like you don't really have either. You just sort of have a general existence of time. Even then, time would be a little bit questionable since you don't have the relative count of going around the sun to use as your time reference point. Hmm. But I didn't bring any traps with me down here, Baldir. There are some there on the space station for you to use. I just don't have any for myself down here. But I don't think any of the space rats are... I look over at my shelter. I never checked the shelter for any space rats. Oh god. Are you saying it isn't the pipe in the walls making those noises? I... I don't know, Baldir. Uh... A day on Venus is longer than its year? It just spins around that slowly? My god. Oh, see, and there's our large platform for our smelting furnace. We'll unpack that. And plug it in. And then we just put down our smelting furnace and voila. We'll go ahead and start smelting the quartz. Just plug that right in. And then turn it on. Because if we don't actually turn it on, it's not actually going to produce anything. We're also out of organic material, so we'll want to collect more of that, too. I'm going to move my resin into this unoccupied storage device. That way, 
I can just have these two for compound at the moment, because, oh boy, they have filled up. Also see that I've got some resin on my gun here. Pull that off. We'll go collect a little bit of organic material. Since that's not very far away. Ooh! Scan that, hell yeah. I'm not gonna worry about putting any tether down because I'm not very far from the base right now. Oh look, there's resin right here too. I might as well grab some of that while I'm at it. Why not? And hello there, Sigmaster, and welcome to the stream. This game is amazing. I'm having a good time playing it so far. I gotta be honest, I am rather fond of just collection, collectathon type games like this. Like the building aspect of it isn't as of what I have available to me anyway at the moment. Not as creative. It's not like Minecraft, say, where I would be building blocks together to actually build a nice little house. No, I'm just printing things out that are all pre-made. But then that lets you go out and just casually grind at collecting things more. Which is something I rather like. Also realizing that there can be complete stacks of things on the gun. Good realization. Because previously, I didn't notice that. And that means that's less storage you have available if you just leave those on there. And now I just slap all my plants on the ground in a very messy fashion. Look at that. Wow. Just gonna start slapping all of my trash collectibles all over the place here and just make a huge mess. I'm ready to criticize Streamer for strip mining all resources from this unsuspecting planet. Please, why are you even here? That's why we came down to land on this planet was so that we could just collect everything. And what is this? Hello. I want to see what that is. All right, let me grab some compound here. Actually, before I do that, before we go exploring, I'm going to turn off the generator and turn off the furnace. I need to find another item that I can throw into the research chamber. There's also a little bit of organic material just hanging out on its own. Grab that. Throw that over to my base. I believe there was an item out over in that direction with my tethers that I can go check out. I want to start building some wind turbines, though, so I can get some additional power. Where was that? Medium generator. Aha, here we go. Wind turbine costs 2500 Oh my god. I guess, though, this is the medium size, actually. Which I don't have any ceramic right now anyway. I have to go find clay for that. But if I go over here in the small printer... And I can find the small wind turbine. And that one I can research, because I do have 500 bytes. And then I can grab some glass. It's not going to let me stick it in the printer at the moment. We're going to put it in my bag. And then I can pull out the printer. Or was that in the medium printer? Uh, excuse my blindness, chat. Aha! There we go. It's in my backpack. That's why I couldn't find it in my printers. Alright, that's one small winter. Oh, look at 
it up there? Just this little tiny piece attached to my backpack. <laughs> it's so small. Look, then we can stick it on my base. Let's uh, have a second one. I'm gonna slap that on the ground temporarily. And that's kind of cute. It gives itself its own little platform to hang out on. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it directly onto my shelter. Wonderful. Let's go and find... First, we will want to go back down to er the Earth again to, you know, collect more quartz for more tiny baby turbines. But I want one of those researchable materials. I think there was one over here. One small turbine for men. <laughs> one tiny turbine for Kanko. That's right. I don't want... Big researchable collectibles or generators of any kind. I want little tiny ones and just have a million of them around. Wow! Uh, I'm not readily seeing anything directly to the end of that tether line. Hang on, right there. Refill my oxygen. And then we go. <laughs> yeah, they're, oh my god, they they are like little pinwheels. Oh my god. We need more little tiny turbines. That way we can put more windmills or little pinwheels to decorate our base. Now I just want a million of them. Because it's true, they are a lot like little pinwheels. Hell. See, and then we can just put that in our little research station. Alright. So, let's say I have some compounds on my backpack now. I think... Hang on, if I swap out, right now, this has a little spot for glass. If I swap this over to tethers, it will hold my compound there. So I'm going to grab one or two extra compounds into my bag. And now we're going to go run over there and see what that weird thing was. It looked kind of like a building to me, but we'll find out when we get closer. As I get a little bit distracted. Is this just plant? What the fuck is this? I should have hovered over it for a moment longer. Let me pull out the gun. Is it store at the side? No. Hmm. I don't know what that was. I didn't collect enough of it, it seems, for it to stay. Get some bites. And continue over to this thing. Oh, uh oh. I ran out of tethers. Hang on. Print. Okay. Honestly, it looks like a half buried. Like, portal type device. Transporter or something. Like, you'd walk through it and whoosh, you would go somewhere. I can see that it's got some materials stuck onto it. I guess I'll steal those. Wonder if I could dig it up. Oh. Is this like a giant wheel? So you'd hop into the seat here? And then you could speed around in it? Just a giant wheel vehicle. Of course, at the same time, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's not quite completely round in the way that would work. What if you hop into it? And from there, I don't know, it just starts flying around. How peculiar. However, you can see it has an enter option. <laughs> Look, I'm in it. Aren't I cool? Oh boy. 
Oh, and then it's gonna deposit me awkwardly underneath it. Okay, cool. Uh, help. Freedom, please. That's really cool. Eh? Eh? That's comedy! Cause wheel? Really? Huh? Comedy gold. Everybody loved it. Can I pull this off? Eh. Ooh. <laughs> I can. It's my seat now. I don't know if I can continue to dig this out or not. Hmm. It's very large, so it's a little bit hard. Oh! I did. I freed it. But it's possible I... In order to actually pick it up or do anything with it, I might have to have some large contraption. But what I can do is just straight up steal the seat from it. Bye! Bye, chair, now. Now we can have a place to sit down and rest, Chet. I grab the organic. There we go. <sighs> I can hear them laughing from up here, Baldir says sadly from his space station. All he has is a radio to listen by. Ugh. <sighs> There's part one of our vehicle, though. So now I don't have to print out this rover seat, which only takes two compounds anyway, so it's not like it's that hard. But next we want the tractor, which takes two aluminum. So we're going to need some raw material. So we're going to have to go dig down again so I can find that. So since I right now have a research material going, I've got shit here at the base, I should probably unload my bag. By extension, I do have this laterite that I have collected already that I can throw into my smelting furnace. So let's get that started. And I can load off my organic material. Might as well power that on. Keep this compound. Uh, ditch this resin. I'm gonna remove this compound, or this organic, off of my gun also. Unless it's not gonna let me do that. So I guess I'll leave it? Okay. Okay. I don't really care to wait around for that to finish, to put a new piece on. Oh, hang on. Ooh. The laterite makes some aluminum, so I have... One aluminum I can use. So we'll want to find more laterite. I want more aluminum. We also want more quartz so we can get more glass so we can make more small turbines. So let's go out and start digging down where my compound spot was at here and do some material exploration. All right, tethers, here we go. See, the tethers are also convenient because then they almost form a sort of rope for exploration, so you know which way you need to go to get out as you dig, and it just becomes this horrible mess, really. It's so unattractive. And what gets the job done? That's what you go with. So down we go as we collect up some quartz. Just have to keep in mind how much space I'm taking up in my backpack so I don't fill it up before I get to any laterite or something. Ooh, ooh. All right, chat, here we go. There's a little cavern down right here, so we want to progress carefully. A little bit out of reach. It looks like if I go over here, though, it'll be easy to form a little ramp staircase right here. What? There's space rats down here? You heard a squeak? Uh oh. Means we're gonna have to be cautious. Who knows what hides? What? Ow! Ow! 
And I've, since I've fallen down so quickly, uh, kind of disconnected myself. So now we're gonna have to build out right here. Quick, uh, rather promptly too, so I can get my tethers connected up. Uh, so I don't run out of oxygen here. Uh, and one more. There we go. Safe oxygenated. We're all good. See, and now that it's like really open here, you can see why the tethers are really nice. The fact that they glow a little bit, so they pop out. So they become very convenient for being able to navigate the way out. Though technically, I can also always, you know, just dig up too. Now, we can see there's a whole lot of... And now that I'm looking at my backpack actually as I'm talking, I'm already full up on quartz. And so I don't really need to collect anymore at the moment. Just to make sure I really top myself out here though, because we got a little bit remaining. Almost. And we'll just go until, yep, it popped off. Okay. So let's just go ahead and start running around here and see what we can find. The space rats hide in the shadows. Oh. Better keep my eyes peeled then. Print out some more tethers too. It's also very dark. I can make work lamps, but I don't think I have the material currently in order to make it. And here we do have a research item, so I'm going to want to bring that back with me. So I can slap that down in the research lab. Because I'm sure when we get back, we're going to be done researching the piece we currently have. And I do see what appears to be some more material right here, and I think I saw another shiny material out in that direction or maybe it was over here we've got a few ways we can go so not gonna bring the research item with me in this direction just gonna take a nice little walk over here so what is this because it sure is pretty it is sphalerite which is zinc material I would have preferred the laterite, but I mean, I'm not gonna complain about finding some other kind of resource, eh? We'll go ahead and collect a little bit of it since I've got some space on my bag. I'm also out of tethers again, so we're going to go ahead and use our final block here. Fill that back up. And now if I swap out over here to say, print a beacon, we can fill up that spot with quartz. And then that gives us an extra little storage space. Oh, and now my bag is full because I've just dropped some on the ground. So let's go run over here and see if there's anything. Ooh. Eh? Eh. Ah, there we go. See, all right. See, chat, we've got some laterite right here. I would eat the fuck out of that quartz. It does resemble rock candy. It looks so good, you just wanna eat it. Holy shit. The laterite looks kind of like a stack of coins. And there's a, hmm, there's a lot of it in here, my god. All right, so now we know we can come back here for that laterite. But for now, since my bag is full, we're going to have to go back to the shelter. We'll offload, get things loaded into my shelter furnace. My smelting furnace. And then we will return. Of course, bringing this research item along with me. So we can research it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe we'll come across some more of this weird green rack. So we can research again 
Will we come back for that laterite? Why, of course, we will climb right back down to get more laterite. Uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit of digging, however, because it's, uh, ah, at the right shape to get out. Uh-oh. It'll take a hot minute here and now as I try to, uh, build and dig so I can actually, you know, leave. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Since it's easier to- uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. I, uh... I broke my tether chain. Let me just, uh... Fix that? Fix that. Good. Hmm? Maybe if I just kind of dig out along right here. It's very steep. So it's, uh, very awkward to climb down. I think I'm just gonna straight go wild. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. All right, just a little bit more. I'll have to do a lot of jumping in order to get up and down. There we are. All right. Is Astro near multiplayer? Yep, just as Horace says, it is indeed multiplayer. I don't know what kind of player cap it has or how well it plays multiplayer. Because I haven't done that at all. But I imagine it's probably pretty enjoyable. And then I, as I get back to my base, I just look at this mess I have of materials. How embarrassing. Let's start, I suppose, by doing the quartz. Put down two of this failurite. Turn that on. Slap some organic down. Fuck, I just realized that I forgot the goddamn research rock I had. Now we're gonna have to walk all the way back over. We're gonna have to pick it up and carry it here. Oh, so much extra walking. Also, do you see that chip up there on the top of the mountains? Is that laterite too? It doesn't look quite the same shape, so think so, but now I want to go check out that, too. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and continue this little section, because I think it's going to be easier to dig down a walking path than try to add and make one. So very cautiously, just gonna dig along here. Excuse me, quartz. Uh-oh. Right, no, come back! Stick the tether on the wall. I like they will fall down, just barely place on the side or something if you're digging. But if you pre-stick them to the wall, they're like, Oh, okay, this is fine. I'll stay here for you, no problem. Whee! Okay. Ah! Getting a little, a, a little bit stuck. There we go. And then we'll just use my soil to build this out so we have a nice ramp. And there we go. Okay. Get here. Wait, did I break my tether again? I did. There we go. Also grab that quartz and up we go. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Oh. Perfect. Or, never mind, not perfect. Still kind of shitty. I think that's one of the things that I've come across that is a little bit irritating. Is that it's just kind of difficult to create nice, convenient ramps when you're trying to dig down into the... I did forget the research rock again! God damn it! Thank you, Horace. Hill. I've only played with Luna, but it was a great time in co-op. Ah, so there you have it. There's one player's opinion. Game is enjoyable in co-op. 
at least with the one person. Okay, now we are leaving with the research rock. See, very awkward to build smooth descending paths. I feel like there almost needs to be a maybe camera mode that lets you pull away from the character in a way that makes it easier to place the blocks, perhaps? Hmm. And yes, thank you. Thank you. I have secured the rock. Now I will bring it back. I imagine four players is the multiplayer limit. A friend was trying to get me into it. Haven't actually played. Well... I would say it's somewhat hard for me to really definitively say this game is good co-op and this game is fine solo player because I'm used to playing games by myself anyway. Like people always say, ah, this game kind of shitty when you play alone and not, not very enjoyable. But then I, I, I kind of peek over from where I'm sitting and I'm like, but I've only played that game alone and I always have a good time. So whether or not you enjoy a game alone or not, it can vary. I I like playing Astroneer just fine by myself, but that doesn't necessarily mean you will, and you might need friends to play it to have a good time. I have no idea. Time to acquire five gigabytes from the rock. Yahoo, yahoo. How much does it have? Examine. No, nope, it has 555. You can see up here in the left corner. You could also see for a moment that said it was going to take 20 minutes. So when I have everything running at the same time, eats up a lot of power. Don't have a lot to provide. I'm going to have so many fucking wind turbines. Oh my God, look at the, all of that glass. I slap my quartz down onto the ground in a messy fashion because I don't have any more storage units, but I guess I have quite a bit of resin so I could build one. Though then again, if I got some printer upgrades, I wonder what it takes to build the large storage. Here we go, large storage. I wonder what medium slots are like, because if I go down here to medium storage, it has eight small slots. Hmm. There is also medium storage silo, but that requires titanium, and I have no fucking idea what is going to give me titanium right now. Going to have to just explore around and see what other resources I find. If I go over to the large resource, large storage right here, this one takes ceramic. And I know you can get clay, and then the clay refines to ceramic. And the four medium slots might refer to, say, how this printer here has the two spot. That might be what medium slot is, which then means a large storage is going to be the same size as medium storage. Not totally sure, though. Hmm... And large storage silo A takes aluminum and steel, so... Large active storage? Convertible storage with slots that can be activated? I don't know what this means, but humorously, this is one I could actually build because I have a bit of zinc, I have a little bit of aluminum, and I do have some resin, so I could actually research and make that one, but I'd need enough bites first. Gonna make another turbine. Eh. Now, where's a spot to put it? Actually, since I don't need to put it directly on my shelter, it makes itself a little platform when I place it down. So what I could do is say, put it here, and then just plug it into my research station. I'm not sure if that actually helps or does anything. 
if there's a power cap or something. Like if I needed more power cells, say. Since there's this. Requires one zinc. I could research it. Storage silo, are you gonna start farming? Just because it's a silo doesn't restrict it to being for farming. I find that more and more I prefer playing co-op instead of solo, but that might be impacted by the fact that I live alone and there's quarantine on. That could potentially be it. And yeah, when you are by yourself, you get to set the pace for the game yourself, which can be nice. Yeah, sometimes it can be the case if you barely know a game and you have a friend that knows a ton about it, there can always be the mix of is your friend just going to race on ahead of you at super high speeds and you're going to just feel out of place left behind? Are they going to help you out as they rear on ahead? I don't know. It could vary. Or maybe your friend just kind of sucks to play with for a particular genre, either because they hate that genre or just the way they are when they play that genre. You can have a good time with a friend and like a person. But you know, it's that case of I like this person, but I would never live with them. I like this person, but I would never play this kind of game with them. You know? Look at my quartz trash pile. Hell. I also don't know. I think I pulled out these resin pieces so I could make more storage. I'm just gonna slap them on the ground instead. I do need to bring some compound with me though. So I can use it for tethers. Fill that up. And grab some extra compound. And off we go. I want to see what it is that's up on the mountain first, I think. And then we'll go back down into the caves and gather up some laterite. Community game night when? That was kind of how the jackbox was. But it's hard to find... I'd say good games for doing a community stream or even just a community game night. Of course, though, then by extension, that can be just a chance thing, too, and that can go wild. Uh, mm. So now I climb up the mountain, maybe. The Jackbox was so much fun. It was so good. I still think back to that occasionally. I think the VOD thumbnail I used for it too was Dingo that Petri did. And so whenever I go over to my VOD channel to upload more VODs, I'll look at that because it's still high enough up and I'll be like, oh my god. So good. Oh, and look, there's Dagnardio. Hello and welcome. Yeah, classic dingo. Community service with chat. We just play some completely open world game and we start doing community service. Now, what are these? Mel? Oh, shit, it's copper material. Hell yeah. Because I definitely remember there was one item that I was interested in that required copper to- Ow! I think that plant hurt me. That wasn't very nice. And there's a research sample from it that's just slowly descending. Hang on. You just hover over that. There we go. Collected. I can also grab, when it drops those pieces, those are seeds that I can grab and collect. And these, are these just tiny pieces of malachite? Because it looks like I'm picking them up. It might just be more like organic or soil-y type material. Hmm. Dingo, I think that was one of the first streams I saw of you. That was a good one to join in on then. And hello there, kitty, and welcome to the stream. Huh? Ow. Fucking... These plants are mean. Poking me. They're kind of like cacti, huh? 
I dig it up. It looks a little bit like squash, though, too, honestly. And now I've got some seeds from them. But do I want to put those in my... I guess I'll take one to go plant over at my base. Ooh, and there's some Lego flowers that I can scan, too. Make sure I get that so I can get that sweet light amount for research. So I then collect more malachite. You can smooth out terrain, I think, while holding alt with your collector out. If you hold alt, that builds, not smooths. However, if I hold control, that does smooth. Hmm. Maybe that will make it a lot easier to build those stupid rail like ramps. And hello, by the way, Luna, and welcome to the stream. Those plants are some real pricks. Comedy gold, as always, chat, thank you. You hear that? Everybody else loved it too. Amazing. Comedy master over here. And let's see, that covers, I think, most of the malachite that's up here. It seems that there's more hidden away within the depths of the mountain. But it looked like there was quite a lot. Well, one, my backpack is already getting pretty full up on the malachite. But two, there's also a good amount that's, say, down. Maybe not right there. I think I saw some more on the other side of this wall here. If I walk away, I could see more easily. Ooh. If I use control, that makes kind of a nice little... Ah! <laughs> a nice little bridge piece. Here I am, observing the way I could do that. And then I just slide right off of what I was building. Now we just slide right off the mountain. Oh boy. Oh my god, I'm still going. Stop. Mela shite? Oh. That's not bully pun, the copper. Material. Huh. But that one would be a pun too. Eh, went, 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 went. Eh. Ooh. I like how far away I can scan that. I can't dig from over here, but scanning, not a problem. Yeah, see, off right here, I can see some alashite. I think there might be some right over here on the left. I think that's just plants that's down in these little, um, valley pieces. So let's just go over to this terrible spot here and dig into the mountain to get some malachite from this spot. We brought our A-game, Chet. Of course, you always do, Chet. Real life malachite is also really pretty. I don't know if you've ever seen it, chat. But it's like the just like how it appears in the game, first off, that green color. Real malachite has that very greenish color to it also. And it has sort of circular wavy designs on it when you smooth it out. It's very pretty. By extension, did you know there's a kind of mineral called appetite? You could get yourself one of those stones and then you, you can misplace it and then make jokes about losing your appetite. And then your friend who's hanging out with you will be like, oh man, I guess we can't go lunch, go, go out and get lunch, huh? 
and then you grab your little stone and you're like, oh no, I found it. See, here's my appetite. And then your friend will laugh loudly, applaud you, give you an, a, an award. They're going to write down the joke you made. They're going to mail it into comedy centers around the globe. You're going to get prizes from pun scientists everywhere. Everyone will love you and you will be famous. You're welcome, Chet. That's all you. Yep, and it gets the swirls, the Malachite does. Eh. You have a little rock collection, Fitz? That's pretty cool. Truly, this is the most fitting stream for rock-based puns. I mean, when you're out here collecting all of the rocks, what other kind of pun would be fitting but rock-based puns? And now we can take some of our malachite, which looks pretty because it's little star shapes, too. Gonna plug those in. And let this continue smelting away. And the one little seed that I've got here, we're gonna plant it. And then I'm just gonna throw out all my malachite here on the ground next to the smelter. I think I put the glass over there. Actually, I think I made both the glass pieces into the turbines. We'll stick that piece right here. Oh, I like the quartz since it's in this ball shape. You can just kind of kick it around like a toy. Okay. Now, we're going to want to maybe explore the surface a little bit to see if we can find some more research materials. More of those research rocks and items and the like. We already can see there's these sphere... Hang on. I don't have any compound on my backpack, which is not good since I'm going to run out of tethers way too fast otherwise. One time I bought a salt lick... Uh, I brought a salt lick home because I thought it was a crystal. I mean, to some extent, you could argue that that's kind of what salt is anyway. It, it's a compound. It's sort of mineral, yeah? And, uh... It started melting into my carpet after a day or two. Oh. Well, then that's just a mess, huh? Now, do I want to continue exploring in the direction of this, out into the woods? Do I want to go out more into the plains over here? Ooh, something else to scan right there. Eh? Bing. Okay. And my mind does wander still to the thought of vehicle I can drive around. Perhaps I'll go back to the base, see if I'm able to craft any more of that tractor. And if not, maybe we'll go down into the caves and get some laterite for the aluminum so we can craft it. Let's see. Printer. Oh, actually, I think that might have still been locked. So we're going to want to go into here. Rover seat. Tractor. Two aluminum. We do have enough bites to research it, though, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. Two aluminum. I think I only had one. So, yes. We're going to want to go back down. Hang on. We're going to want to go back down into the caves to collect some laterite. I bet the farmer was mad that his salt lick went missing. Maybe annoyed, but I can't imagine salt licks are that expensive. So he probably would be like, oh, what the fuck? My salt lick getting stolen again. God damn it. But I can't imagine he'd be like, oh no. My whole life is ruined because my salt lick is gone. All right. Still kind of awkward to use the smoothing tool though for, um the ramps, but 
at least gives me a little bit extra to work with. I think doing that little quick sweep works a little bit better than trying to go slowly, cautiously, though. So you just give a little swoop down. Yeah, a little bit steep right here, so it makes it a little bit harder, though. Let's see. Eh. Oh, I didn't mean to collect you, but okay. Ah! Oh, well, looks like we're going the rest of the way down now. It's just like one little misstep, and we're going all the way. Alright, let's see what I can get. Well... I suppose that'll work. I'm just gonna leave it for now. We're going to continue into the caves. Printing a printer is a power move. I mean, how else are you supposed to get larger printers? But just print more! I'm probably also, I think, going to turn around here. I'm just gonna throw all my quartz down on the ground because I don't need more at my base at the moment because I have plenty of quartz. Just fucking ditch it here. Okay. And then we will continue. Just following the path I was previously going. It's right. Woo! Wee! Just following the path that I had. Oop. And I can collect up some of these research samples before I continue. And one. And two. The little research samples, more than anything else, looks like the little Lego pieces. Oh, and look at that. Since I've already got this little block completed, even though it isn't aluminum, I certainly won't say no to it. So let me just stick that in my bag, and we continue. Ah, the laterite. I put down another tether, and we begin to collect. Alright, chat, so going back, I also like, actually, the smoothing tool for collecting material. It, too, is pretty good. Like, look at that. My bag is basically already full already. Jesus Christ. Another kind of mineral is a soda light. So imagine if you got yourself some of that, and then, I don't know, you go to some artisan that carves gemstones and minerals and you hand them the soda light and you say hey can you carve this so it looks like a can of soda and they're like oh sure i mean if you pay me i'll do whatever and then they do so you now have a fake can of soda made out of soda light Soda light looks so pretty. It is pretty. I, a lot of minerals look very pretty, but there's just so fucking many of them. You, you don't tend to know about most. You tend to know about much more common, like quartz. You've probably heard of quartz before playing games. It's very common. But, ooh, ooh we found something here. Curious. But something like Labradorite or Sodalite, you don't hear about. It's much less used for stuff, so nobody cares for the most part. All right, so we have Exodynamics Research Aid, Field Research Unit. Insert appropriate research to unlock. It looks like it's saying I need to put in some compound. And while there is some compound just straight hanging out next to it, I do already have some in my bag, so we can just stick that in, I suppose? Maybe, unless compound is not what it wants? Oh, hang on. I see, it has a symbol on it. I'm just fucking stupid is all. So see, if I hover over that laterite, it gives me a little symbol. And that, that looks like it matches. If I put that in, uh-huh. Hmm. 
Oh my god, 500 bytes? That's very good. I also like the top I've just kind of thrown off, and now it's lost to the depths. And hello there, I'm Matt Fowler, and welcome to the stream. Is that triangle? Is that the Illuminati triangle? It's uh, a good question. I heard astronauts eat mods? Or was it cosmonauts? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. It's a little bit awkward with the light. It can't quite shine it down in there to see what's in there. I'll just walk around. Give a little uh, shine over here. Looks like we've just got some compounds right there. Ah! Don't know what's deeper, though. And let's see. I'm going to walk back, collect up more of my laterite. But not before I research these. Hello. Oops, I accidentally just stuck into my bag. Research. Eh. Come on. There we go. Okay, got that one. And we'll walk back, fill up. Oh, that's right. I also forgot that I had come across this thing, too. Don't forget about that one. Hold it. Carry it. We'll get the ladder right. We'll head out. We'll get all those bites. There's more of these I can research. Eh? All right. And also, aside from soda light, I'm naming these ones off specifically because I can remember them a lot better because of their relative names, you know, because it's appetite, so it sounds like appetite. So, comedy gold, soda light, oh, that's like soda, also comedy gold. So I end up remembering those ones. So by extension, there's another gemstone, not gemstone, mineral type that is called labradorite. Which I remember because then I always just think of, like, the dog, Labradors. Uh, now I have to remember which of these paths actually leads me back to the start and not deeper in. I'm just gonna have to follow them and see which way. I'm gonna need to maybe do a little bit of terraforming. You know, maybe build an arrow of some kind so I can tell which way I need to go. I also see there's shit over here. Let me drop that down for a minute, and let's go check that out. Hmm. Oh, look, it's got some carbon hanging out on it. Do I have any space? Ooh. I do have some space on my bag. Debris, debris. Medium platform B. It's too bad I don't have one of those packager pieces, because then I could just... Grab this and bring it along with me, no problem. But otherwise, all we've got is some debris. And I don't want to have to carry that along because I have got my research. Oh, you know what? I should probably just start bringing packagers around. I bet you I could package up these research items and then just stick it in my bag too. Which would be very convenient and let me run around a lot faster. Okay, I see I'm passing my quartz and the quartz ball, so that means we are back at the entrance. Very good. Fun fact! Dogs are made out of Labradorite. Oh. I don't know, if that were true, I feel like dogs would be needing to go to the bathroom a lot less. Ow. Holy fuck. There is apparently a hole right there. And, um... I lost my rock. Did I just fall down that hole and my rock? I dropped it while I was falling? Uh-oh. My research rock. Oh, yeah, see, here it is. It's fine. It's fine. What's not fine, though, is that hole. I need to fill that up. Oh, that is not the right direction. There we go. Okay. Oh, don't stick that in there, though. Hold it. Oh, hang on, except I slipped again, and ugh, oh my god. Alright, let's say, gonna need to smooth things out again. I you know, my poor big rock. Let's see. Alright. That should maybe help, we'll see. Oop. 
It is extremely slippery, yeah. It's also interesting the way that raw minerals will look versus when you polish them or tumble them because they have very different appearances too. It's like, you know, say diamond, any of those cut gemstones, they look very different in their raw form versus when you actually cut them. That's why you have things like Swarovski crystals that's just glass that's cut to look really fancy. And it does look very fancy. But otherwise, you look at your window and you don't go, wow, I bet that would be a pretty stone. I guess though you do have sea glass, which can look nice, but... You don't usually readily think, wow, glass, I'm gonna put, put that in a fancy ring. But all it takes is polishing something up and giving it the right cuts and boom, looks fancy. I learned lots of different cuts of stone from Dwarf Fortress. Hey, wow! Dwarf Fortress educational game now! Yeah, many stones and stuff in Dwarf Fortress. Just wait for the day when it actually releases. On Steam, I mean. All of its fancy graphic upgrades for it. Not upgrade, however you want to phrase it. And then that will be the stream. All right. Gonna finish smelting this copper. We'll get some aluminum made up and then we will be able to make that tractor. Hmm. Yep, user friendly UI too. Oh, hell yeah. I'm not sure how many people have watched. What was it? Yes, Harriet the Spy. There was that Disney Channel original movie, I think. I... I'm not 100% sure who the girl was that played it, but I'm pretty sure that they were redhead. Clearly then it was Petri playing them. But I remember there was one character who had a house in it. That was really fancy. She had like all this weird shit out in her yard. Imagine, Chet, if you did something like that. You got like a bunch of these wind turbines, a bunch of pin giant pinwheels stuck around in your yard. It becomes a windy day and then just your yard's going absolute mad because of all these pinwheels. You got wind chimes hanging around all over the place. Do you think your neighbors would hate you if you had a whole shit ton of wind chimes out in your yard and you lived somewhere that was very windy very often? Hmm. I know you can get bright lights that you can stick on your house and then they'll light up and then your neighbors will hate you because whoops that light is shining directly into their window keeping them up all night so what if that was the case with wind chimes imagine a windstorm your neighbor's yard is filled with wind chimes and you just hear like this complete racket outside would you be in hell Sorry, shifting around in my chair there, getting, uh, resituating myself to be more comfortable. Made a little wind turbine so I can attach it to my smelter. 
and thank you for following Dark Cluster. Appreciate it. All right, that's gonna be two pieces of aluminum. So let's take it over here. Want that piece too. I think it also took some glass. Relocate this over here. I, it would, yeah, I guess you could call that a distant cacophony. <laughs> Thanks, chat. There it is. Roll credits, cause that's my name. Ho ha! I'm gonna fill up my yard full of wind chimes just so I can be like, whoa, that's a distant cacophony now, isn't it? <laughs> and all it takes is aluminum, so let me just pull that out. Yeah, small printer. Examine this. Or actually, this is printed at the small printer. I get a little bit mixed up. Since this icon has the little two-piece, that means it's the small printer here. So I'll swap over to that. And there's the tractor. Print. On brand, that's right. Fill my yard with wind chimes so I can have an on brand yard. God damn. If Animal Crossing had added back in their gyroids, I could just do a nice little hop right in there. Fill my house with gyroids, fill my island with gyroids, and be like, ah, listen to that cacophony of gyroids. Woo! Should research bigger storage when you get the chance so you don't have a mess of resources just lying around? Yup, I've considered the same thing, and I looked at the options, and kind of like I don't have the materials quite yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to make a vehicle first. Work vehicle with a built-in seat and rechargeable battery. Can't tow a limited number of trailers. Ta-da! And apparently it already has a little seat on it, so I didn't even need to make... What was it? this rover seat. I, technically, though, I didn't make that rover seat. I stole it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave that wind fine plugged in. And we'll just make a new one here. Oop. Make a giant pit to stick them in instead. I just have a bunch of holes filled with resources. That would be hilarious. That's right over here. This is my quartz pit. Just a bunch of quartz. That's right over here is my compound pit. Filled with compounds. That's right over here is my aluminum pit. A whole lot of aluminum. Refined and unrefined all mixed together in a mess. Perhaps I need to put a battery onto this tractor. It does have, it says a built-in seat and rechargeable battery. The problem is probably more like, see I can't pick it up, that I need to say plug it in and charge it like so. If I put a small generator, I would be able to power it on that way too. So it could function it both ways. So let's make a small generator to put it on it. So we can have a wind turbine for when it's windy. And if I need some power in a hurry, we can do that. We just don't want to leave it on. We also then would want a tractor to hook it up to so we can carry around some materials on it. So that way we don't just have it for speed. We also would have it for transporting materials. The rover seat will be useful in the future when I get the medium rover, I would imagine so. And I will also request to try to keep back seating tips to a minimum 
as I am fine just figuring and learning things out as I progress, and if I have any specific questions, then I can ask them. But I, uh... I appreciate and understand the eagerness of wanting to share information. Will do. Thank you. Good. All right. Now, let's see. As I continue cleaning up here, removing this aluminum piece. Let's see. Oh, yes. I was considering that trailer right here. One compound, one aluminum. That's easy to make. Uh, also requires 1,500 bytes, which I have plenty of. We'll go ahead and do that. Let's see. One compound, one aluminum. I have them in my bag. No. Pull that off. Eh. And eh. There we go. I myself am playing Astroneer at the moment and got stuff kind of all over the place, so... Yeah. You start out building the storage units, the smaller ones like this, and then you're like, well, but there's so many materials that I would clog up my base and have to spend a bunch of materials on storage. I'm just going to start flinging these around all over the place instead. Look at this poor printer slowly working away because of the energy drain that I've got on everything. Hell. Really need some more power production. Let's see. Toss those down there and let me look at my book again. See what research options I've got for this. We've got medium generator. Don't have any carbon, so don't care too much about that. However, this medium solar power requires one copper and one glass, which I could totally do, but I cannot research because it's too expensive. This medium wind turbine I could totally do, but I would need to go out and collect some clay, but I also don't have enough power to research it. Going to need to just go out and get more research items. That way I can get more bites. Also, in general, just find more small ones to check out. So on. <laughs> the printer is doing their best. Slowly. Slowly. There we go. Ta-da! Now let's see. Alright. And do I just plug them together to hook them up? Yes, wonderful. And I also see then that is why you want these storage units really. So you can slap them down on your trailers. Look, then we can put in some plants so I can have that as an emergency power source, and boom. Then if you got larger storage, you could put larger storage pieces on your trailer. Uh-huh. Hmm. All right. Now, I stopped to consider, what do I want to do? Do I want to go back down into the caves to do some more underground exploration? Or, yeah, that's true, it is like space trucking, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Clearly, too, you do your trucking out here on the surface. Hang on. I can make that. There was the oxygenator. Here's oxygen filter. Provides a temporary increase to your oxygen capacity. Container that expands your oxygen capacity. And here's a portable oxygenator that requires nanocarbon alloy and 10k bytes. I don't think that one's happening. So, uh... I also don't have any tethers made right now, so I need to make some of those, too. Space ATs. Yep, 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 yep. Alright. Which way we want the tethers. There we go. Ding!
Yep, this here's a tractor trailer used to ride these babies for miles. Huh. Back in my day, that's all we had, too. You nowadays can make these fancy vehicles that you have to research later on, but me? No, no, I stick with the basics. Brother, you ever truck in space? Hmm. Because you really should try it. Can I drop down the tethers while I'm driving along? No. Also can't grab them. Ooh, I just <laughs> just backed into that robot there. Okay, let's just drive away. We'll keep an eye on my oxygen supply here. So we can just do sort of a ooh. Uh-uh. What is this? Hello. I leap out of mine. I'm assuming then this is a small or medium-sized uh, rover. <laughs> Not in very good shape, though. Pretty worse for the wear. It does have a small battery I can steal off of it, though. Thanks. We continue exploring. And here's another one of these weird cylinders. That means it does have sneaky hidden resources up in it. So we're going to take this scrap and we'll take this laterite. And I think all that's going to be down is another rover seat. And I've already got one stashed at my base, so we'll leave that one alone. I guess we are all space truckers, actually. Being on Earth in space and all that. Hey? Eh? True, that's right, it was our- Oh, uh, I forgot to bring one of those packagers. Because then I would be able to slap this. Into it, and then I'd be able to just stick it into my little storage, I think. However, if I hop over here, I might be able to just steal one of these packagers, and rather than using it for a robot, Let's see if I can use it on this rock. Da -da -da. Mm. Uh -huh. Aha, and like so, I can just take my rock and stick it in my little storage. Perfect. That's convenient, hell yeah. Let's go ahead and drive over to one of these other shelters so I can grab up some more. Big sneeze, ho oh boy. Okay. Grab that research sample, and then I'll just dig up these packagers and put them on my storage piece. I think that's just trash. All right, that gives me one more packager. It also seems like my truck is actually providing me with oxygen. So I don't need to, that, that's why I didn't need to put down any tethers there, is because boom, my tractor provides it. I would assume though that I will require, oh thank god, I was thinking earlier maybe I should build a beacon at my base before I go off, but it gives me a tag for it, so that's nice. I also like that there's fucking three things right here, let's see, what do we have, we've got debris. Ooh, extenders, power routing item, use, eh, used to add length to power cables. Segments will show power directions. Neat. Stick that in my storage. There's another extender. And then I think the rest are just debris. And I don't currently have anything built for turning debris into scrap. And I don't really have... All I've got is the one packager I stole from the broken shipping crate. Well, I don't really want to just be packaging up debris anyway. Let's go all the way around the planet. Hmm. I wonder 
how big the planet is. I also like that all of these scrap spots just had fucking extenders on all of them. That's a... Well... Oh, hang on. Hello? Here we go. What does it take to make one of those packagers? Because I'm pretty sure... That that was a small print item. So I could be wrong, and I'm misremembering seeing it. I don't really need to look at every single one of these groups because it's, uh, they're all sort of. I think I just passed it. It's somewhere in here, because I definitely remember seeing one at some point. Oh, see? Like, right fucking next to the small printer at the top. Wow! I need graphite, though. I haven't found that yet. Oh. Like, I packaged that rock, and then I forgot to actually grab it. It's pretty convenient, though, that I can get those packagers from the shipping crates that are lost around. Because then if I just find some more of them, we can get more packagers. So maybe I collected up some from one. If I head back then to my base and we can empty out what I currently have, I had that one shipping crate that was directly next to my base and I could probably steal some more packagers from there. And I can just, you know, drive around, find more, steal more packagers have more spots for researchable rocks. Ah, there's my base. See? Just like this one right here. Which I grab and go directly next to a research rock and package it. Yay. Hello, can someone go to the store for me? It's negative 11 degrees Celsius. Hmm. I think you might have to pay someone in chat to do that for you. I don't know that they'll do it for free. I, it does sound like a good time. Just, yeah, just grab a blanket, wrap yourself up, casually go to the store with that. See, there's another packager right there hidden in the back. Thanks for the packagers, Robo Chumps. <laughs> anyway, that's mine. Of course, this one, I'm right next to the base already. So we can unload our findings. Also, rather convenient, I think, by having the small battery on the storage unit. I think that's supplying my uh, tractor here, too. I guess I'll just leave it on then. Oops, I didn't mean to put you in my bag. I wanted to unpack you. However, I do see when I unpacked that rock that the packager that went with it is now gone. So, it seems then that the packagers are one-time use items. So after you package something, that's it. So I want to make sure to not be wasteful with those packagers. Oh, wait, no, I kept this organic intentionally so I'd have some emergency organic material to use for my small generator. I want to just then throw these extenders down. Oops. Oh, that's neat. You can flatten it out so it's like you're loading everything up flat on your trailer. Huh. Alright, we continue exploring now. I like this surface exploration around in my tractor. 
I also like having the wind turbine up on front because then it's like a little propeller, like an airplane. Here I am, driving around in my tractor, and I'm just like, woo, wee, I'm on an airplane. I was just singing in my shower, my voice cracked so hard it sounded like someone stepped on an ostrich. Oh, but see, that's the bonus of singing in your shower or when you sing and nobody can hear you is it doesn't matter if you sound absolutely terrible because nobody can hear you anyway. So they can't go, stop it. You sound like a dying ostrich and it's terrible. Shut up. You, you, you don't need to cry at all because Nobody's around to say that to you. That's why I like, one of the reasons I like driving to work is because then that is when there's total solitude and then you can nicely listen to music and nobody can hear you except you. So then you just sing along to your music. Even if you're not good at singing. <laughs> Did you find what was that pillar of light? I haven't gone to go check that out yet. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest, too. I also like that we found uh, quite the crevice canyon here. Maybe I'll go drive back to my base and start going in the direction of that light. Maybe we can go see what that was. That yeah, is a massive crevasse, indeed. And here we got some power cells, a consumable item that increases your power capacity. Hmm. I don't know if that means my, like my character's power capacity or the, say the power capacity of your base or even both. I guess I'll just leave it on my pack for now. We continue. Eat it? Consume? Yeah, well, it does say it's consumable, and how do you normally consume things? By eating them. Partake in the battery cuisine, indeed. Uh, don't eat batteries. You can't stop me. It, it tells me that I can consume it and it is consumable and it will increase my power capacity. You think I'm going to listen to you saying, no, don't do it. Don't eat the battery. Nah, nah. I grab the battery and I stick it in my mouth. I eat it. As long as it's on your person, it's your character's battery. Probably just applies to whatever battery you're sticking it on. And I think this is carbon here. The whole no, this is graphite. This is the graphite. That means I would be able to make some packagers. That's good. Also, gotta be careful that I don't accidentally just fall down into this crevasse. Hmm. Probably should have offloaded some of my... Uh, compounds or something here. Just even the scrap that I collected. Okay. That will allow me to carry some more graphite. Like all of this laterite that I've got hanging out on my gun too. But too late. I've already set off. I'm not at the base. Can't do anything about it now actually put one in my mouth when I was like two years old. Yeah. I recall as a small, like very small child, I hardly remember the period of my life at all at that age. I probably would have been three, four, maybe. Again, tiny child. And I think we might have been moving houses. I recall getting into car to go somewhere, but I don't recall specifically where. And out in the yard, sort of the area between our neighbor and our house, there was this little sphere that was half red, half white. 
I kind of think it might be something like a fishing bobber, perhaps. But when I was tiny child, I had no idea what it was. And I'm checking it out, and I, I had picked it up and was kind of showing my siblings. And I was like, this is a thing. What do you think it is? Hmm, hmm, hmm. And they're like, huh, maybe it's this thing. I don't know. Hmm, hmm. And I'm like, I think it's a gumball. And I put that shit in my mouth, and I tried to bite it, to consume it, and chew it like a gumball. And then it just started foaming a shit ton. So then here I've got it in my mouth, just foaming. And then my parents were like, holy shit, child. And then we had to go rush inside so that they could wash my, uh, or rinse my mouth out. Yeah, it starts off kind of funny, like, me, child, sticking weird things in my mouth and chewing them. How wacky, oh wacky kid. And then the foam comes, and then you're like, what the fuck? I'm surprised any of us survived childhood. It's because us as tiny children, it's always, inter it, it's kind of always a mix. We're both, vi like, way more delicate than we realize, and also way more resilient than we realize. That's intriguing. And here we've got some oxygen filters. Provides a temporary increase to your oxygen capacity. I don't think I have room. Well, let me just ditch this carbon, or, sorry, organic that I've got in my bag. I don't really need to run around with that. I feel like I should put... I should go back over to where that carbon crevice was and make a beacon. So I think I had some material that could craft that on me. Though I might have had that previously and I've run out. I don't know. Let's drive over here and let me see if I can do that. Kid Kako was very wacky. Yeah. Did anyone have those push pull chalk things they would give out at Popeyes? I used to chew on those. Now that I wouldn't be able to answer because I ha I don't think I have ever been to a Popeyes actually. At various places I've lived, they've been around. Nope, nope, requires quartz and I don't have any quartz on me. So, I don't know the type of things that Popeyes has, because I've never been to them. It's always curious, by extension, when people talk about fast food places, or honestly, even restaurants in general. And you know that you have that kind of restaurant around near you, and at any time you could go to one. But you just never have. There's a light over there. So then they're like, hey, you know those Popeyes? They've got the things at the Popeyes. And you're like, huh, hmm, hmm. I've never been to a Popeyes. Kind of the same case with Burger King. I think I've been to a Burger King once, twice, maybe three times. But otherwise, basically never go there. So when people even make comparisons or, and are like, Burger King's way better than McDonald's. Burger King is way better than this other place. These types of things from Burger King, pretty good. Blah, blah, blah. Then I have to dig down to the recesses of my mind and go, oh, I don't recall Burger King being that great. And, um... This seems to be what's generating that beam of light. For McDonald's, to be honest. I would say I prefer McDonald's just for the point that I have don't really ever eat at Burger King, so I don't really have that point. So, um, here, Chet. That was what was creating the light. This is when I need the camera, huh? Then I could take a very cool picture of me hanging out with this giant weird shape. 
As much as I would like to take the tractor closer, I can only get so close here. Because I don't want to accidentally descend down into the pits. That would be bad. I feel like I'd be almost dooming myself. Uh-oh. Uh, excuse me? Rock piece? Is this malachite? No, it's just organic. It's just... I want this gone. There we go. No way I can drive over it. Or past it, through it, whatnot. This is very interesting looking too. It's like very crystalline icy. Yeah, I'll mess the photo up. Ugh. Okay, we're going to want to make a little ramp. Eh. <laughs> Doing something tiny like that isn't too bad. So what do we have? We've got a cable that comes out. I mean, this side has one too? Yeah. This also looks really fancy on the ground here. Hmm. I wonder if we need to, say, power this? Would we need maybe a powering device? I have my singular wind turbine. And my small generator. I wonder what happens if I plug this in. I like the fact that if you terraform something out of place like a tree, it would disappear so it's no longer in the way. Yeah, so then here you are driving around tree blocking your path, eh, just tell, uh, terraform and have it disappear. No problem. Ooh. Oop. My compound. Fortunately, also, there's plenty of organic material around, so even though I've ditched some, that's fine. Okay, put that here. Plug that in. Alright, last generator. Oh, wait, I, already, I think I already had one made up. Oops, oh well. Too late. All right, one, two, three. Now I just need some organic material. Hopping though first over here to my tractor. That means I guess I can grab out the one small generator I made and just, whoop. <laughs> oops, stick that back on. Is powering the ominous monolith really a good idea? Come on, look at this thing. I think it's a great idea. What could go wrong? Always power mysterious technology pieces you don't fully understand. Only good can come of it. Come on, how else do you learn but by trying things out? Okay, got lots of organic now. Now we can just sprint back over. Best idea ever. Hell yeah. Oh, research that. Continue. Reoxygenate. All right, and then we power. Then we power. All right, so now something I'm seeing here is that we've got this, these little purple stripes. How I pulled this off and they changed heights. Man, it's, uh, feels a little bit slippery, too. Can't, can't, can't jump up on top. I feel like maybe that just my little baby generators don't provide enough power. So, we would need to come back with something that provides a little bit more. 
Because you can see as I hover over, say, the small battery, and it says produces one power. I hover over the small generators, which I'm not close enough to, so we'll hover over the one I have right here. This says it produces one power. So I feel like maybe I'm just not producing enough power with small generators. So I would need to return to this mysterious monolith. Need medium generators? Yeah, I kind of assumed I'd need something bigger, yes. Might as well just ditch my generator, my small ones here though. I guess though, technically I could probably grab a platform and just cover a platform with small generators. Since the platforms, you can put multiple pieces on top of, so it could just take a platform, put several on top, take one of its plugs and plug it into the base, and boom. Now let's see. I'm pretty sure we need to cross back over across to get back to our home base, because I've kind of lost the marker for home. So now we might get a little bit lost as we attempt to get back. But I recall at least we were going from here, so this would probably be the best way to begin. Uh, however, definitely going to need to terraform this. Ah! That's too high. Bring that back down. Alright, just a little... There we go. Little specks. Fill it up a little bit, and then smooth. Then I should be able to drive across, no problem. Ah. There we go, yes. Real nice and comfy. And then we go for a ride. Just going through the mountains. I recall, as we're driving next to these giant crevices. Here. Like, doing so in a video game like this, it's kind of like, eh, this is no big deal. Or at least not completely horrifying. Riding in car in real life, right next to giant drops down to the depths. Very different! I remember small being small child and going on road trips. And there were times where we had to drive through the mountains. And so here you would be on basically a single lane strip of road, going around, wrapping around the mountain. You'd kind of peer over the edge. See the drop. Oh, those are the tops of trees. Hmm. And you casually lean back in the car and you go, I, I think I'm going to take a nap so I can just sleep through this period of time for our road trip, you know? And then you fall asleep, and you wake back up, and you look back out the window, and oh, thank God, everything is flat, flat, flat. It's not as bad if you're driving, then it's all skirt. It's over here, up on the mountaintops, just high speed racing, going as fast as he possibly can. Here's another car approaching. They better fucking get out of the way fast. And he just booking it around the corners. Holy hell. Your fear of heights isn't as much in video games as it is in real life. No, because video games, you know, if you fall, ultimately, your character might die or whatnot, but not a huge deal. But in real life, you plummet off the edge. Uh... I'm gonna have a good time. Also, I think all we did was do a huge loop around right back over to this giant thing. Unless this is actually a second one. Which is entirely possible. 
If I drive in and get closer, I do see this platform is raised up. And I see that these are plugged into nothing. So, uh... This is a new one. So here we're driving past giant monolith number two in our attempt to journey home. We're gonna end up driving all around the planet because I got lost. I've crashed four cars. Oh. I've only crashed one. I crashed my first car. And it's not like that accident was very serious either. I rear-ended somebody. It wasn't that bad. But it was enough to take my own car to prevent me from being able to drive my car properly. And it has since been replaced. Giant monolith number three. I think that would be three. Because there was the one light I could see from home. There was the one I happened across that I stuck those small generators on. What I could see from home, yeah. Three? Three sounds right. How did you crash? I was listening to music in my car, and I thought the car that was somewhat in front of me was slowing down to turn. And then I realized that they were slowing down and stopping, and my the brakes in the car I had weren't amazing. So I couldn't stop fast enough before I rear- before I crashed into them. And again, it wasn't anything serious. I turned and so I just got their like back right hat. Not even half, it was like the rear light area. So. Classic first car stuff makes you better, you think? And then I died. Rip, I'm actually a ghost playing right now. Hope you're enjoying my ghost stream. Vroom vroom. As now we just kind of wander the landscape, missing home. One day we'll happen across it. One day that little pop-up saying, Oh, here's your home right here. That'll appear one day. One day. I suppose I could even just drive around and collect up materials and make home base number two. And we'll start from scratch. There we go. There's another beacon of light. I wonder if maybe I could just start driving around and drive towards whatever beacons I see. And maybe at one point it'll bring us to the beacon that I saw from being at our shelter. Hmm... Might as well just drive towards it, I suppose. Wait. Don't drive across from there, because that's going to take me over a crevice. That's dangerous. Drive around. What's it like being a ghost? Pretty light. It's sometimes inconvenient, since holding a corporeal form can sometimes be a little bit exhausting. Interacting with physical objects can be a little bit difficult sometimes, too, since you have to focus a lot more. Makes it very difficult for streaming, because most streamers have to focus on just the game and interacting with chat well. I also now have to focus on giving power and form so that I may interact with my keyboard with my mouse, if I need to, I don't know, grab at my microphone and swing it around. Now this, this is the one I was at earlier, yeah? Yes. All right, so we have done a giant loop around and have made it back to the monolith I was at earlier, which isn't terrible because that means I can just start from here and see if I can manage to make it back home from here. Alright, there we go. Made a bridge that I can drive across. I like that it saves when I get in my tractor too. Whoa, whoa. Okay, safe. So, in a sense, you're using the force. Suppose I am, yes. 
And I'm off for the day, friends. Hope you have a great day, and thanks for the stream. No problem. Thanks for coming on by to watch. Oh, appreciated. Oh my god, I was so close to just driving right off the edge of that canyon. Holy hell. Okay, let me just turn around and uh, cross this little section here that's safe. You see, I came back at a weird time. Yeah, we were a little bit lost. Came back when you get to see that giant monolith. That was what that... I don't know if you were here earlier for it. With that light that was poking out into the sky. It's from that giant monolith. And currently we are lost and trying to figure out how the fuck we get home. So we're just driving around right now. So does losing home also mean you have lost your sick rock collection? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Trying to drive over the resin? Not a good idea. Don't do that. I'm pretty sure, at least, I was coming from this direction. So I'm pretty sure I saw... That monolith coming around from here. So let's keep driving in this direction. I recognize that wheelie. I think that wheelie, that, that was a different wheelie. Because the wheelie that I got, I guess that is that second wheelie we came across though, yes. Now the question is, am I going too far over to the right? Do I need to maybe drive in this direction more? I also like this nice... Wait, no, that's just snow. Never mind. For a second, I thought that was forming a cute little archway, but no, it's not the case. You're gonna be right back. That's fine. Let's see. By the way, hello, Pyro Pal, and welcome to the stream. Now, this does not feel familiar. This feels way too much, way too rocky. However, I do see graphite right here, and I do remember collecting that. I do remember these pieces, so I think this is the way that I want to go. Just popping out that resin to get out of my way. Now I can drive right in between there. Where are we? I don't know. Everything's so unfamiliar. This, at least, this is familiar. Maybe? I thought it was, but now that I'm kind of looking around, that might just be a coincidence. Then again, I do remember there being the one little shuttle piece here and another one being off. And the fact that there was that little, that little rover itself that was sticking out from the canyon there. Let's drive between the graphite over here. Ah. I'm gonna have to hop out again and just sort of collect that a little bit so it's out of my way again. There we go. Whenever I see resin in this game, it just makes me think of Kraft Macaroni. Yeah, honestly, the resin does have a very food macaroni type appearance. I would agree with that. Oh, see? You can also see that abandoned piece of organic material. Evidence that I was here earlier. Whoa, careful. I want some mech. Ugh. Now, now everyone in chat is gonna be like, eh, I want some macaroni and cheese. Please, can we make some macaroni and cheese? Streamer, hello, can we make some macaroni and cheese? I would love some. Oh my God. I did it. Chat, it's home. <laughs> We're finally safe. We can return back, we can unload my tractor, I can drive poorly over compounds and get stuck a little bit. There we go. Uh. With no giant dongs in sight, we are stranded in unknown territories. Truly, I should have been building cocks along the way. 
then I would be able to just look into the sky and say, where is it? I want, I want the cock so that I can find my way home. Thank God. Oh, oh, oh. I throw myself into my shelter. I kiss the ground. I throw myself onto the bed and I fall asleep. Woo! Woo, 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 woo! All right. Ah. Well, since we found out what those giant beams of light are, there are those interesting monoliths. We've got a little bit of a base going here. We're back here in the shelter. It's not quite four hours, but yesterday's stream did run on the long side anyway. I think I am ready for a break now. So, chat, that means it's going to be the end of the stream for today. A reminder for firstly Chet's choice. So if you'd like to go cast a vote. There we go. For the round two voting for what you want to see me play for Chet's choice at the end of the month. Go ahead and cast your vote there. Otherwise, thank you everybody for coming on by to watch. Thank you for those who have resubscribed, subscribed, and for those who have followed. And again, always biggest highlight for thank you for coming on by to watch. It's appreciated and always a fun time. Now let me just cast my gaze. Why? Hmm. 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 Let's go ahead and raid Infernus today. He's playing Seven Days to Die. Another survival game, huh? There we go. I think I dozed off. It's okay. This was a very, uh, a sort of laid back, relaxing stream. Close. So, you know, I even during high octane streams i have a tendency to doze off because i never sleep enough so here i am streamers screaming loudly and i'm just like ah, 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 z, z, z. and i fall asleep but thanks everybody have a lovely day lovely night whatever time zone you're in and i hope to see you next time farewell <laughs>